that check mark and I'll say either do not send or send to Microsoft. In this case, I'll set it to send to Microsoft. Now if I hit send and receive, it'll actually give me, as of version 5.5, the ability to review what I'm sending up through to Microsoft. Okay, so this is based on, this was feedback from customers. They wanted more control over what they were sharing with us. And so this is what we've implemented in 5.5. Exactly, so you see exactly what information you're sending. If you want to go into the minutia of exactly what you're sending, the actual, you know, the text file of what gets sent, um, I can save an audit log. It takes a few minutes to process. I've already got one here open, but you can see exactly all of the application IDs that are going to be sent up through the web service. Also, all of the um, all of the driver data, et cetera, that you've collected that you're going to send through the web service. So all of that is captured, and you can then go in and actually decide whether or not you want to report that up through to Microsoft through the web service. Okay. So if I hit send, then basically that will send and compare against our Microsoft uh, compatibility web service and we'll know whether or not there's updated data. Now one thing that uh, I'd like to call out here in terms of syncing data, um, before the data wasn't as uh, frequently updated. Now with Act 5.5, we're really looking at making sure the data gets updated more or less on a monthly or better basis. So we're actually trying to give more incentive to go out and sync your data more frequently to get more uh, data returned back. And here, for example, we can see that uh, a lot of net new items were, were reported against here that we didn't have the same status on. So you see all these yellow triangles. Now that was net updates to data that I, you know, last time I synced this computer was about a month ago. And now we've, we've actually updated data since then. Okay, so just in a month, all these vendors have provided new updates then on the exactly of their apps. So okay. it does pay to continually go back and sync with data. Because if you're in the process of purchasing, remediating, applying compatibility fixes, whatever you're doing to apps, virtualizing them and, and other operating systems, if you come back to this and you see that the vendors actually provided some detail as to whether or not the app is fixed or it runs or there's a compatible version, it's probably going to save you time and, and in some cases money to come back here and see that there's actually some, some compatibility or, or statement around whether or not there's a version of that app that works. Okay. If I've already got uh, an inventory of my applications or if I've got a standard desktop deployed and I already know all the applications that are part of that, um, is there a way to get just this, the, uh, the, the compatibility report? So let's take one, one step back here quickly. Um, a lot of the reporting mechanisms will focus on add or remove programs. Mm -hmm. uh, what AppCompat Toolkit will do is actually go beyond what most reporting mechanisms will report against, and it will look in the MSI database, it will look in add or remove programs, it will look at the shell, the application paths. It will also do searches against um, path environment variables, file extension handlers, run and run once, and it will look at all your services and components. So. If there's an app on that machine, it will detect it. And likewise, if it's if the app is launched in the three days or however long that agent is running, whether it's on the on a remote server or somewhere not on that local machine, it will detect those apps as well. So it really gives you the most comprehensive inventory you can possibly get. Okay. So besides looking at what's actually installed on the machine, we look at the processes that launch so we can discover stuff being installed. Exactly, and, and really going beyond the the you know the kind of the okay. call of duty in terms of what we what we can detect there compared to other mechanisms. But if if you are happy with your inventory and you know that you've got everything possible that you want to move over, for example, all of your managed apps that you know that you want to move, we've um, taken the same data that we're using in the App Compat Toolkit and the compatibility site and really put that into a, a huge Excel file so you can actually do queries against your your inventory data with uh, the data that we're using in that web service. So. Okay. We have the Windows Vista application compatibility list. Here is a downloadable list. Again, this is this is free to get. And what that will what will that will give you when you download that is an Excel file. So as of June 8th, we have about 8,500 plus applications in there. Whether or not they're compatible on 32 or 64 bit, and you know more you know information about the applications, the company homepages, the app names, the major and minor versions of the app, and all the compatibility data that we collect. So 
you can actually use this list of known compatible applications to query against your inventory that you have is, is another means to get that information if you don't want to use the App Compat Toolkit. All right. Well, so, this, oh, go ahead. So the last thing, so uh, if you don't have an inventory and don't want to use the App Compat Toolkit but have one or two machines that you know what apps are on there and you just want to check app and hardware compatibility, we still have the compatibility site, which is microsoft.com slash windows slash compatibility. And here you can get all the data on a one-by-one -one basis of the hardware and software um, and compatibility of those items against Windows Vista. And while, again, it's not parity with Windows 7, it's a good rule of thumb if that application or that hardware works on Windows Vista, there's a pretty good likelihood that it will work on Windows 7, a very high likelihood, in fact. All right. Well, this is cool. So Jeremy, where do I go to get this? If I want to download the App Compat Toolkit or if I want to grab the spreadsheet, what's the best way to find them? So we have one source on TechNet. If you go to technet.microsoft.com slash appcompat, all of those resources and stuff I didn't even show today. I mean, there's the App Quality Cookbook for Windows 7, which explains anything that will break apps from Vista to 7. The App Compat Cookbook, if you're coming from XP to Windows Vista or want to see what, what changed between those two operating systems. All of those resources are pointed out in that one site on, on technet.microsoft.com slash appcompat. All right. This was great. Thanks for your time, Jeremy. Thank you.